Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. Give God some praise this morning. Hallelujah. If you're glad to be in the service just one more time, give God some praise. Don't give me the praise because I ain't do nothing for you. I didn't wake you up this morning. I didn't start you on your way. It was him. So give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to ask our brothers if they would come and lead us in our devotional period this morning. Just one. All right. Good morning, everybody. Everybody, once again, good morning. Uh, this is uh, this is this this is our devotionary period. That means everybody is a choir member. Everybody. everybody. This is collectively devotion. Amen. I know you had devotion this morning at your house. Thank God for that. You probably, some, some of you on the way to church. And uh, I thank God for that. But at this period, this is collectively. We all get together and, and tell the Lord and, and, and how, how, how good God has been to all of us all of these years. Amen. I don't mind thanking the Lord for what he's done for me. Amen. So, so since you're here, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise because of who he is. Amen, amen, amen. Whoa, pass me not, oh gentle Savior. Oh, hear my arm, oh, cry, and while all others are calling, Savior, do not pay me by. I'm calling Savior, oh Savior, hear my all oh, cry. Oh, why all of the sound of call all in? Please stand for reading God's Word. We'll be reading Psalms 100. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is good. He is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. Yes. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Yes, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into the courts of praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Amen. May God add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. me
family, O oh Lord. Lift them up each and every day, Father. And Father, pray for Eastern Star right now, for the entire church family, all the auxiliaries, O oh Lord. Father, lift them up, O oh Lord, as we go in this journey, Father. And Father, as we know, Father, this is Black History Month, O oh Lord, Father. Keep us, Father, and guide us, O oh Father, as we go through this month, Father, because we have had so many, O oh Lord, Father, let us, Father, to do the right thing, Father, and live right, O oh Lord, Father. And Father, we pray right now, Father, our pastor, O oh Lord, Father, guide him, O oh Lord, him and his family, O oh Lord, Father, lift him up, O oh Lord, Father, for this service this morning, Father. And Father, we pray for this choir, O oh Lord, Father, to guide us and lead us, O oh Lord, Father. And Father, we know, Father, as we go through the day, O oh Lord, Father, you know, Father, that you have blessed us so much, O oh Lord, Father. You have blessed us from going in and going out, O oh Lord, Father. You have blessed us, O oh Lord, where we have good doctor's report, O oh Lord. We can say hallelujah, O oh Lord, Father. We can raise our hands up and say thank you, Jesus, O oh Lord, each and every day. Father, you blessed us, O oh Lord, Father. It's just so good, Father, to move around and say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, O oh Lord, Father. It's just so good to, to be in homes and, and, and transportation and say, God, you were there to be praised this morning, Father. And we just give you all the praise this morning, Father. These and many other blessings we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we me love walk with me walk with me love walk with me while the My friend, Lord, be my friend, Lord, be my friend, be my friend, Lord, be my friend, hey, hey, why the Jesus to be my friend. Hold my hand, Lord. Hold my hand, Lord. Hold my hand. Hold my hand, Lord. Hold my hand, hey, hey, hey. while I'm on the Christian journey. I, I want Jesus to hold my Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Hey, hey, hey. 
Good morning again, everybody. We want to thank you, each and every one of you, for being here with us today, collectively, to thank God for the praises that he has bestowed upon us. He has been good to us. And we are here this morning to sing the praises of his goodness. Lord, you have been good. You have taken care of us. You have brought us all the way back around, and we are back here again to collectively praise you. And we ask each and every one of you, say your own private prayer. Make sure that you thank God for being here with other saints to praise him. This we ask in Jesus' name. May we all say amen.
Amen. That's, hey, that's okay on the announcements until we, until we get them together. Amen. 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 Good morning again. Th th there are just a few announcements uh, that I want to uh, read for us uh, this morning. Um, first of all, I want to uh, want us to continue to be in prayer uh, for the Calco family, uh, for Sister Barbara Jones and her family. And on yesterday, around seven something in the morning, Brother Wilbur Fuselier went to be with the Lord. Uh, so we want to be in prayer for Sister Mabel uh, and the rest of the family. Amen. God is able to comfort us uh, in, our, in our time of bereavement. So we want to keep those families lifted in prayer. Amen? Amen. Amen. I want to do this. <clears throat> On um, March the 3rd, March the 3rd, that's the first Sunday in March. Uh, at 9.30, the Sunday school will have its Sunday school campaign. And they are inviting all of us to come out to Sunday school at 9.30 in the morning. 9.30. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. I, I just, I just, just, just a quick question. How many of y'all still work? You still work? Still work? Throw them, throw them hands up. Put them in the air. Wave them like you just don't care. All right. Y'all still work? Y'all still work? I mean, some people in here ain't, 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 being, ain't, ain't being honest. They in church. You still work? You still work, Reggie. So the question, okay, here's the question I want to raise. How many of y'all have to be at work at 6 o'clock? All right, got two, three. What about 7 o'clock? All right, all right, I see, I see. What about 8 o'clock? 8 o'clock. What about nine o'clock? All right, so we got six, seven, eight, nine, and it still ain't nine thirty yet. <laughs> so Monday through Friday, for the most part, we all up at six o'clock. What happens to your sleep pattern on Sunday morning? I'm sorry. What happens to our sleep pattern on Sunday morning? What happens to our sleep pattern? Why does it change on Sunday morning? Y'all ain't got to answer that. I'm just going to let y'all, you know, I'm, I'm going to let y'all sleep on that one. <laughs> 930, March 3rd, Sunday school campaign. And guess what? We have gift cards. Gift card. I bet y'all woke up then, didn't you? <laughs> and not only we have gift cards, we got some continental breakfast. I bet y'all don't get that at work, do you? <laughs> Juice and donuts at work. <laughs> yeah. We have continental breakfast. Amen. But this, this listen, if the, those who can and those who will, we are trying to... Um, Start a campaign, a Sunday school uh, enjoyment campaign. It is the joy of Sunday schooling. That is what uh, we have tagged this. And we would like for those who can and those who will uh, to be a part of this so that we may help our Sunday school grow. Amen? Amen. How many of you uh, 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 know particular parts of the Bible because you went to Sunday school? Some of us are Bible scholars, all thanks to Sunday school. Amen? Amen. So there is a benefit and a blessing in attending Sunday school. All right. Also, this is kind of small print. Okay, I'm going okay, to need my glasses for this one. And I don't even wear glasses. 
All right. During our family conference, because we have a family conference coming up real soon, it is, I can't even read this. I done blew it up as, as, as far as I can blow it up, y'all. Okay. There is a youth praise dance workshop every Wednesday starting February 28th in preparation for our family conference. Amen? So if you have young people, there's not an age limit on here. Yes, it is. Ages 5 to 18. Ages 5 to 18, we have a praise dance workshop every Wednesday, uh, starting February the 28th. And that is Wednesday at from 5.30 to 7. So we won't even keep you long, from 5.30 to 7. So those of you who have young people, uh, or if you're 18 and under, we would like for you to participate in, in this. And this is... Um, uh, in preparation for our, uh, our, our family conference uh, that we are going to have in the month of April. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, here's what I need to do. I need all, it, everybody who had a shirt on, everybody who has a shirt, whether it is a fraternity, sorority, um, civic group, um, Dallas Cowboys, <laughs> You got one on, stand up. Or if you got African attire on, stand up. <clears throat> Amen. 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 I want you to see the diversity. I'm going to talk to them after service. <laughs> but I, what, what I want everybody to see is the diversity in our church and what I would like for us uh, to continue to do as we grow as a church is to embrace diversity. I'm going to say that again. I want us as a church to, to, to continue to embrace diversity. Amen. Amen. Just because we look, may look a little different than you today, we still believe in giving God his praise. Amen. Amen. So I don't want y'all to just look at us as those that didn't come to praise God just to wear shirts. We still came to give God the praise. We still believe God is good. We still believe God is in the blessing business. We still believe that God is the reason for our, our, our being here today. Uh, we still believe that he gave us a reasonable portion of our lives, our health, and our strength. We still believe in getting our praise on, even though we look different than y'all look this morning. Amen? Amen? Amen. So let's embrace this diversity, and let's get our praise on this morning. Thank y'all so much. All right, we want, to, uh, we want to do this. We want to recognize our visitors today. If you are visiting with us from, where, from wherever you are, uh, we want you to stand and be recognized today. Amen. All of our visitors, you would please stand. God bless you. You ain't no visitor. You ain't no visitor. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So, okay. So, you, okay. so, you're, so you're hanging out with your mama today. All right. Are there any? Are there? Is there anybody else? I see. I see. A, I, I see a face that I haven't seen before. Brother Mighty Sharp too. God bless y'all. God bless y'all. God bless y'all. God bless y'all. If y'all don't mind, if if y'all would like, give us your name and your church home because we love to fellowship with you. Oh, <laughs> amen. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, my sister. Amen. D-Town, I ain't in here by myself today. Represent. God bless you. Yes, ma'am. No? 
Yes, you. <laughs> Amen. You here with Sister Lois and Big Cat. That is your great. That's your granddaughter. So okay, okay so you pop, you, you you who now? Pop pop pop. I ain't never heard nobody call you Paw Paw before. Right? Okay, that's your Paw Paw right there. All right. <laughs> to all of our visitors, Hebrews 13, 1 and 2 reminds us to let brotherly love continue and be not forgetful to entertain strangers whereby some have entertained angels unawares. And we just thank God for your presence. And we ask that you do whatever it is God lays upon your heart to lift his name. Because when praises go up, blessings come down. But check this out, y'all. We used to pass our visitors cards. Guess what? We got QR codes now. Y'all better ask somebody. We got QR codes now. Up on the screen, if you take a moment, uh, you know how you know how y'all young young people do it. Y'all take pictures of stuff now and enlarge it, and you scan that QR code. You can fill out your visitors cards electronically and send it in. We growing, y'all. Y'all better give God some praise for some growth up in here. Amen, amen. So you can uh, take, take that picture uh, with your phone uh, and, 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 and fill out that visitor's card because we love to fellowship with you further uh, after service, amen? amen? Amen, give God some praise for that. We're gonna ask our brothers to come now it is offering time.
Um, can, can you hear me? Not really. Amen. Can y'all hear me better now? I want to take this opportunity uh, to invite you to the altar. Let's pray together this morning. Let's pray together this morning. While we're coming, I uh, want to give, give a shout out uh, to mother of sister Roxana Barrett. She'll be 80. This year, I'm sorry, on the 20th, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Now, 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 we already sang happy birthday to the February birthdays, but that's special right there. That's special. 80 never looked so good. Praise the Lord. Mama Roxana will be 80. Guess what? That ain't, that ain't even all. That, that ain't even all. Uh, on, um, I, I forget the date. I think that it's, I forget the date. Give me the 22nd. 22nd. Brother James Miller will be 97. That's a blessing. Let's give God some praise for our trailblazers. Amen. And they still looking good. Hallelujah. God be praised. If God blesses me to see 97, I want to look just as good as Brother Miller. That is a blessing. Amen. Again, uh, as we come to the altar, we want to remember those families who have lost loved ones, uh, those who have gone on before us, um, and we want to, um, you know, be a fence of comfort around those of our brothers and sisters who need it the most. And we wanted to continue to be in prayer for our chairman of deacons uh, who had successful surgery, who is recovering. Amen. Amen. We know that God is a healer, and we thank God for his, his, his grace and his mercy. Amen? Amen? Amen. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, it is in the name of Jesus that we come before your throne of grace, saying how excellent is your name in all the earth. Father, you are worthy of all of our praise. You are king above all other kings. You are Lord above all other lords. You have been our bridge over troubled waters. You have been our way out of no way. You have been the door that has been opened for us. And Father, you have been the one who began a great work in us and will see it until its completion. How we thank you this morning for just another day's journey. Thank you, Father, for thinking about us enough to touch us with your finger of love and bid our moments to roll on just a little while longer. How we thank you, Lord. How we praise you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, thank you for another day. Thank you, Lord, for your grace that was sufficient and your mercy that made uh, our enemies behave. Thank you, Father, for looking out for us. Lord, we're, we're mindful of the fact that it's not because of how good we've been, but, of how good, but, but because of how good you are. And in your goodness, you look beyond our faults and you saw our needs. In your goodness, you gave us a reasonable portion of our lives, our health, and our strength. In your goodness, you looked at our faults and you wiped the slate clean. Thank you, Father, for your goodness and your mercy towards me. Now, Lord, we come before your presence and we admit that we haven't done everything that you've asked us to do, haven't been all that you've asked us to be. So, Father, we desire right now that because you've given us another day, You've given us another day to get it right. So search our hearts, Lord. If there's anything that's not like you, 
there's anything that's going to stop you from doing what you desire to do in our lives, get it out of the way. Take it out of us. Strengthen us. Prepare us, Father, to serve you. Prepare us to give you our best. It is in the name of Jesus we pray. And then, Lord, we, we lift those names to you that we've called out, those families that we've called out to you, Father. Father, comfort those that have lost loved ones. And to those that don't have direction, Father, give direction. And to those that are weak, Father, give strength right now. And for those that don't understand, give understanding right now. In the name of Jesus, we know you can. We know you will. And then, Father, we ask that you be those things to us that we need you to be. In times past, as we look back over our lives, you've been a father for the fatherless. You've been a mother for the motherless. You've been a company keeper in a lonely hour. You've been a friend. You've been a brother. You've been a sister. You've been a way out of no way. Father, whatever we need you to be, you've been that. And Father, whatever we need, you, we're confident that you've got it. You're our peace. You're our strength. You're our sustainer. You're our provider. You're our God. Thank you, Father, for being all that you are to us. Now, Lord, these, ha these that have assembled around your altar, we're confident, Father, that whatever we need, you already know what we need. Even when we can't quite articulate it, your Holy Spirit speaks for us and articulates to you exactly what we need. So, Father, give us what we need right now. In the name of Jesus, we'll wait on you. And while we wait, Father, give us that peace that surpasses our understanding. And Lord, guard our hearts and our minds in you. So we thank you, Father, in advance for the answer. Thank you, Father, for mending hearts that have been broken. Thank you, Father, for putting our lives back together again. Thank you, Father, for blessing marriages. Thank you, Father, for that job that is on the way. Thank you for that new assignment. Thank you for the new house. Thank you for the new car. Thank you for the financial blessing. Thank you for the things that are on the way. We give you the highest praise. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. And give God some praise as if he's already answered your prayer. Amen. If you have your Bibles, you have your Bibles with you today. <laughs> you have your Bibles with you today. We are in the Old Testament book of Daniel. Very familiar passage of scripture. Daniel, the third chapter, starting at verse 13. Amen. Daniel, the third chapter, starting at verse 13. Reading down through verse 18, Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3, starting at verse 13 through verse 18. Of course, I'm reading for the, from the NIV translation of this passage of scripture. And if you are able, uh, please rise to your feet in the honor of the reading of God's word. We have been in a series that we've been teaching and preaching from that we've entitled Stepping Out of Your Comfort Zone. 
stepping out of your comfort zone. I, I, I want to want to share this because uh, as God has give, give, given me inspiration uh, to share from this uh, subject, I uh, want to just talk to us about what a comfort zone really is because, uh, because a lot of us can't really relate to what a comfort zone is because we really don't know what it is. But can I share with us what a comfort zone is to give us some uh, fresh perspective about where some of us are in our lives. A comfort zone, watch this, is a psychological environment that makes you feel like you're in control of everything. It's a psychological environment. It's, 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 it's an environment that you have created and you are, and, and, and you, and, and you are comfortable in it and don't want to move from it because you are afraid of losing control. That's why some people are where they are because they always have to have the answers. Always have to know what step to take next. Always have to know what I'm going to do next. I, 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 we, we, we are people who always like to know what the answers are. We are, we, we are people who always want to know how the movie ends before we watch it. That's a comfort, that, that, that's a comfort zone. It's a psychological environment to where we feel like we are in control. And that explains a lot for a lot of people. The Bible tells us in Daniel 3, verses 13 through 18. Here's what it reads. Furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king, and Nebuchadnezzar said, said, said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up? Now when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, Zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music. If you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hands. But if he does not. We want you to know your majesty that we will not serve your gods nor worship the image of gold you have set up. Amen. Just for a few moments with your prayers, I've chosen this as a subject from which to preach good trouble. Good trouble. Good trouble. Um, good trouble is a what was a statement, and now it is a movie about the life which 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 chronicles the life. Thank you, ushers. Which chronicles the life uh, of the late great um, uh, congressman John Lewis, uh, who took uh, an unpopular stance, an unpopular stand in the face of racism um, for equal rights for black people. He stood for equality and every time he took a stand, this unpopular stand got him in some kind of trouble. But he considered that the trouble that he was in was good trouble. 
And every now and then, my brothers and sisters, good trouble will shake your comfort zone. Good trouble will get you into some situations that trouble will not get you in at all. Dr. King once said, watch this, that the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands in moments of challenge and controversy. Some trouble in life, though it disrupts our comfort zone, is necessary. I think I'll say that again. There is some trouble that you get in that's necessary. Some trouble will change the trajectory of your life. Some trouble will change the trajectory of somebody else's life. All trouble ain't bad trouble. Watch this, my brothers and sisters. And, 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 and as we uh, uh, talk about comfort zones, uh, uh, when we're in a comfort zone, the, 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 the comfort uh, that you're in, it makes you confident that you'll experience as less anxiety as possible, while at the same time, it limits your potential and it stunts your growth. Can I say that again? The comfort that we find ourselves in at times, it gives you the confidence that you ain't got to have no stress or you ain't got to have no anxiety. But the bad part about that is that it stunts your growth and it limits your potential. As we come to our text, my brothers and sisters, even though it is a familiar passage of scripture I, 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 I want us to take note of a few things and, and even though it's familiar uh, King Nebuchadnezzar by his actions says that it is not enough for me to be a king but I need to remind people every single day of who I am let me set the stage because the children of God are now in Babylonian Captivity. They are now in exile. So those that are of Hebrew descent, they have been taken away from uh, their culture and they have been placed in the culture of the Babylonians. So while they are in, uh, in, in, in the culture of the Babylonians, Daniel uh, interprets a dream for King, Nebu uh, for, for King Nebuchadnezzar and King Nebuchadnezzar got it twisted. He misinterpreted what it was uh, that Daniel was saying to him through the dream. So because of misinterpretation, he says, I need to create a statue that is 90 feet high and nine feet wide so that people, when they see it every single day, will, will recognize who I am. And can I tell you this, my brothers and sisters, you got to be careful about giving big stages to small people because small people can't handle big stages. Small people have to have something to stand on in order for people to see them. No matter how hard they try though, my brothers and sisters, when you are small, you can't be big because a little got you. I'll I, 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 I move on from that. Because see, when you're comfortable in your own skin, you don't need to create objects in order to constantly remind people of who you are. When you're confident in your own skin, you ain't got to be loud. You ain't got to let everybody know you in the room. Because I've come to understand, my brothers and sisters, sometimes the most powerful people in the room are the ones that show up and don't say nothing. But the weakest people in the room always got to run their mouth, always got to tell you who they are, always got to tell you who they are uh, by, 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 by what they drive, where they live, how much money they got in their pocket. They always talking because it's the stuff that makes them and not and 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 not who they are. 
that makes them Nebuchadnezzar uh, 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 erects this statue that's 90 feet high. And watch this. My brothers and sisters, based on Nebuchadnezzar's status and success, you would, you would have thought that, would have made, that, that, that it would have made perfectly good sense for everybody to comply to his request of when you hear the music, I need you to bow down and worship this golden image. You would have thought that because of who he was and his status, that people would comply, but three didn't. Word got back to the king that there were three Hebrews who simply ignored his request. These three Hebrew boys, watch this, were in position of status and significance. And whenever you're in a position of influence, there's always somebody watching you to see if you're going to make a mistake or a misstep. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stood out, watch this, because they were different. And whenever you are different, people will make assumptions about you based on how you present yourself. I'll say it another way. There are some people who have problems with you because you are confident in who you are. It, it's, 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 you know, it's Black History Month, and I, and, I, and I just, you know, I believe I'll just go ahead and say this uh, because I got the mic right now. That there, there, there are people uh, that I, that there are community, well, let me just say it like this. I'm going to clean it up a little bit because there are communities that I work in where people that don't necessarily like me, the reason that they don't like me is because of who I am. No, let me say it a little differently. They don't like me because the color of my skin. I'll give you an example. I, I, I made a decision, had to make a decision because we had some problems that we had to straighten out. I made a decision. And because I made the decision, people don't have a problem with the decision. They have a problem with the person that made the decision. And here's what I've determined in my life, my brothers and sisters. I'm not going to let somebody else's problem with me become a problem for me. I'm going to continue to be who I am. I'm, 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 I'm going to continue to stand on business because I am where I am, not because people put me there. I am where I am because I worked hard for this position. And God put me in a place of status, not because of people, but because of who he is, not because of who I am but because of how I operate under him and when you operate under God when you know it is God who is who 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 has helped you get to where you are then you ain't got to worry about people because God is bigger than people you go ahead and do you you go ahead and stand on business because it's not about who I am it's about whose I am and when I represent whose I am I ain't stunt nobody Watch this, watch this, watch this. Whenever you dare to be different, you run the risk of being misunderstood. These people, watch this, with small spirits sought to impress Nebuchadnezzar by reporting to him something that somebody else was doing wrong. But may I ask this question? How could they report some, some, what, what, what somebody else was doing if they were doing what they were supposed to be doing. The Bible clearly states that Nebuchadnezzar told everybody, when you hear the music, I need y'all to bow down. So how can you report that somebody else ain't bowing down if you were doing what you're supposed to be doing? <laughs> Watch this. Well, I, you know what, can I bring a little bit closer? 
closer, closer to home because uh, I, I, I'm pretty sure all of us ha have the same experience. How they know you was at the club? know whose social media page you fall in. <laughs> Here's what I concluded. That some people don't have a life and have nothing else better to do than to get your business and try to tell everything that you're doing. What, 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 what I'm going to need people to do is to mind your own business, take care of what's under your roof, like the Williams brothers said, sweep around your own front door before you try to sweep around mine. That's the problem with some people. You always up in somebody else's business and you ain't got time to take care of what's in you. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, we ain't bowing, we ain't bending, and we ain't obliging to your request. We're going to stand on business as it relates to doing what it is that God would want us to do. And can I bless you real quick, my brothers and sisters, before I get to these three points? When you take care of God's business, here is the good news. God will take care of you. When you do it like God wants you to do it, God will take care of you. Three things I want to lift from this passage of scripture, and I want you to see this. I want you to see the conflict with the decree. The conflict with the decree. Nothing troubles one who appoints himself king more than anyone who dares to oppose his authority. Have you ever heard of the little man syndrome? Somebody got bosses, they ain't nothing but about three or four, four feet tall. And they have this complex about wanting to be recognized as big baller, shot caller. And they have a complex about their height. So they say, so they, so, so, so they say sometimes without saying, I'm going to let y'all know who I am by enforcing my authority on you. And when you don't obey my authority the way I want you to, I'm going to write you up. Anybody ever dealt with a boss like that? Anybody got a boss currently like that? Well, watch this, my brothers and sisters. So they report this to King Nebuchadnezzar. And he says, he says this. It, I, I'm going to play this music again. And the next time I play it, Y'all better. But watch this, watch this. So, so, so those who report to the king, they reported to the king, uh, they stood back just to see what would happen. And let me tell y'all something that y'all probably did not know, but it's on social media every day now. What a crisis to you is entertainment for somebody else. Have you ever seen social media? Or, have you, or, or, or better yet, have you ever been uh, to, a, to, 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 a, to a high school, even a, no, I'm sorry, even an elementary school where kids got phones? They'll film fights. That's, that, 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 is, that is the thing that people do now. They take their cameras out and they film somebody else's crisis 
because what's a crisis for somebody else is entertainment for them. So they report to the king because they know the king is going to be mad. And then they say to themselves, oh, we're going to see something now. They ain't going to bow. It's, they, they, they about to be thrown in the fiery furnace. It's entertainment for some people. And my brothers and sisters, I'm going to take it a step further. Your crisis will be somebody else's entertainment. Somebody else will get on the phone about what's going on in your life. Girl, have you heard? Have you seen? It's entertainment for somebody else. A crisis situation for somebody is entertainment for somebody else. But my brothers and sisters, can I help you right now? You can be entertained by whatever I'm going through all you want to. But I, but I want to encourage you to keep watching. Because God ain't through with my situation. Keep watching. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Keep watching. Because my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. Keep watching. Because all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. It may be entertainment to you, but keep watching because God will show up in my situation. They had a conflict with the decree, but watch this. Check this out. The next thing we see is the command that they defied. The command that they, that, 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 that they defied. It would have been comfortable for them to go along with the command of the king. They could have said to themselves, well, if we do bow, ain't nobody going to notice. Ain't nobody going to see. We could simply bow with our bodies and not with our hearts. Ain't nobody going to notice if we comply. If we just go ahead and do what it is that they asking us to do. But can I help us? Because, and, 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 and maybe this ain't you, because you've probably been saved all your life. <laughs> and you ain't never had no kind of problems. You're a perfect saint. As a matter of fact, we're going to make a statue out of y'all. <laughs> to show how perfect saints look. But if you're like me, sometimes we make habits of trying to justify what we know is wrong. Am, am, I, am, I, am, I, am I somewhere in here today? Well, I know I need to go, but I'm tired. I know I need to do this now. I know this is the right thing to do. But God knows where my heart is. God understands. And we make a habit, my brothers and sisters, of trying to justify what is wrong. And, and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego could have very easily done that. Let's justify it. Let's do it. And we'll justify it later. But watch this. Whenever you are in a position of leadership, you have the responsibility of keeping it 100 because people want to check your authenticity. They are in a leadership position. The king appointed them as uh, uh, leaders of the Hebrews. And they were given positions of status. And watch this. Some people will sacrifice integrity by fitting in when they should be standing out. We'll give up integrity. Just to stand out. Watch this. And then every now and then, for God, you will have to take a stand that is unpopular. These three Hebrew boys, again, they were given uh, these positions of status. Uh, uh, and and they, uh, because they had found favor with man. Obviously, they had found favor with the king because the king gave them these positions. Watch this. When you're a child of God. That has, that has found favor with man, it is a direct result of the favor that you have already found with God. I'm going to say that again. 
When you have found favor with man, it is because God has already given you favor. But in this particular passage of scripture, it appears that favor with man has run out. <laughs> and when favor with man runs out, here is the good news. That's when the favor of God kicks in. My brothers and my sisters, it's okay to find favor with man, but you better make sure you got favor with God because man can like you one day and hate you the next. Man can have you up one day and put you down the next. Man can include you one day and exclude you the next day. But the favor of God continues. And whenever you got the favor of God on your life, God will put you in places you never thought you could be. God will give you positions you thought you could never have. God I will bless you with material resources that most people won't have. I would rather have favor with God than have favor with man. Finally, my brothers and sisters, the confidence that delivered. Am I preaching, KK? Am I doing all right? Watch this. Whenever you stand for the right cause. God will sign off on it. Watch this. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego uh, were men of faith. Watch this. Not men of supposition. Let me see if I can explain it. They were careful not to force their will on God. They first talked about what God was able to do. Then they dealt with the other side of his ability. That was his inactivity. Watch this. Just because God is able doesn't always mean he'll be active. Let me, let, me, let me see if I can help you understand. Have there been prayers in your life that you prayed and God didn't answer them? Has there ever been a time in your life where you said, I know God can do it, but God didn't do it? It's in the text. They say, we know our God is able. We know what our God can do. Our God will deliver you. The, uh, uh, our God will deliver us because he's able. And then they said, but if not, I'm in the text. But if not, it does not mean that God is not able. Can I tell you how some people operate in faith? Watch this. Just because we want him to do it does not mean he's going to do it. And there is a such thing that people operate with, and that is called proper, uh, 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 profitable faith. It's profitable faith. Watch this. Profitable faith is faith that only obeys God if there is a reward attached to my obedience. I'm going to obey him because I know he's going to reward me for my obedience. I know God is going to do But can I ask you this question? Would you still have faith if faith didn't have a reward? Would you still have it if God said no? Would you still operate with faith if God said not yet? Would you still operate in faith if God says not this one but that one? The Bible says that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had enough faith in God, enough belief in God, enough trust 
in God to come to the conclusion that whatever God wants, whatever way he decides to bless me, it's his will and not mine. I thought everybody was going to shout about that one. Whatever God decides to do, God is your way and not mine. If you don't decide to heal my loved one, if you don't decide to give me this job, if you don't decide to give me this car, if you don't decide to give me this, I trust your judgment. That's what faith says. Faith says, God, I'm going I'm to yield to what it is you decide you want to do. Watch this. Watch this. There are times in our lives where God says, I'm not going to let you avoid this one. I'm going to let you experience this one. But while you experience this one, I'm going to walk with you. It's in the text. It's in the text. They told, they told King Nebuchadnezzar, dude, you wasting your time. You wasting your time, my boy. We, 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 we ain't going to bow. We ain't going to do none of that. So as a matter of fact, you can play the music right now. You ain't got to wait. Because we ain't going to do it. And he says, what God is going to deliver you from my authority? Watch this. When he throws them in the fire furnace, and I'm going to fast forward because we know the story. The Bible says that, wait a minute. He said, wait a minute. I thought I threw three in there. They said, you did. You did. You counted. One, one two, three. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Shadrach, Meshach. That's, that's three. But it's a fourth one. That's leading them out. And he looks like the son of God. Can I bless y'all with it? Because God in Hebrew, watch this. God in Hebrew is Eli, which simply means the God of the Hebrews. Can I tell you what, 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 what Nebuchadnezzar was saying when he says it looked like the son of God? Basically what he was saying is, I've heard the Hebrews talk about their God. But now, I see him. <laughs> Woo! I'm a, listen, I'm about to close now. But here it is, my brothers and sisters. There will come a time in your life where the God that you have been talking about, the God that you said will make a way, the God that you said could heal, the God that you said could do all these kind of things will actually show up in your situation and he'll heal. He'll show up and make a way. He'll show up and open a door. He'll show up and take care of your children. He'll show up and take care of your house. He'll show up and take care of your finances. He'll show up on your job. He'll show up at the school. He'll show up the same God that we talk about, the same God that we pray to, the same God that makes a way every now and then. Is there anybody in the house today that the God that you've been talking about, the God that mama's been talking about, the God that the deacons pray about, the God that the choir sings about, the same God will show up. He'll show up in the morning, show up in the evening. He'll show up and make everything. He'll show up and turn it around. 
show up and heal. Show up and give direction. Show up and part the Red Sea. Show up, show up, show up. God will, God will, God will, God will show up in the morning. Show up. I'm so glad that I serve a God. He not only sits high and looks low, but every now and then he'll come down and show up in my situation. God will. God will. God will. How many know that God will? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he want it? Won't he want it? Won't he want it? Won't he show up? Won't he show up? Won't he make a way? I know he will. I know he will. I know he will. I tried him. I tried him. And I found out he's all right. All right, all right. All right, all right. All right, all right. Let's get a Lord a hand clap of praise. Let's get a Lord a hand clap of praise. All oh, y'all acting like the fourth man ain't showed up in the fire for you. I know there's been some times in my life I was in the fire. Beautiful thing about that fire he talking about. The people that threw him in the fire was the ones that was consumed, amen. The chain, the, the, the ropes that bound them was the only thing that was singed, amen. God is good. God has been good to me. This call is for those who want to know about this man that was in the fourth fire. In the fire. The fourth man that was in the fire. This call is also for those who might have fell away from the church. And this call is also for those who just need some prayer. Those who just want to have a little community talk with Jesus. We know we've had some loss. We've been experiencing some loss around here lately. So we know where there's loss, there's heartache, and there's pain, there's tears. But we also know that there's a man that can dry all your tears away. Turn your midnights in the day, huh? There's a man that can heal your broken heart. And all you gotta do is stand for Jesus. All you gotta do is be that light. Cause sometimes the only Jesus that certain people see is you. Whatever you want today. This call is also for those who may be looking for a church home. You've been searching, been looking for somewhere to worship amongst the saints. ours to extend and yours to receive but we still gonna pray let us go to God Heavenly Father we thank you thank you for being so good to us oh God God we thank you for being sovereign 
We thank you for being God and God alone. Father, we thank you that you that you supplied all our every needs, Heavenly Father. Father, we thank you for your divine protection. We thank you for being a hiding place, oh God. God, we thank you for the discernment of the Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit, oh God. God, we ask it on this week that you would protect our going ins and our coming out, oh God. God, we ask that you would touch us. As some may be confronted with different problems, Heavenly Father, we ask that you would lead us and guide our minds and our hands and our thoughts, oh God, so that we, be, we may make the proper choices in life, oh God. We may make the choices that someone will say even during their hard times that must be a child of God. As we looked at these scriptures on this morning, oh God, we thank you for the example of the Hebrew boys. They came out the fire and they said it must be servants of God. And God, as you lead us through the different fires of life, allow us to come out like the Hebrew boys, oh God, and let our every actions be that of a servant of God. Let them, when they see us, Heavenly Father, they see you. When they see our actions, they see what would Jesus do. We're asking for your divine guidance, oh God. God, we're asking that you would go into the jailhouses. We're asking that you would go into the hospitals, oh God. Somebody looking for a healing right now, oh God. These and many other blessings we ask in Jesus' name. And we all said amen. amen. Well, if y'all would do like I'm doing. Stand. We hope that y'all have a wonderful week. It's good to see you all here today. And let's keep those families that had losses in prayer. Those families that are still in mourning, let's keep them in prayer, amen? amen. Let us go to God's throne of grace. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, oh God. We thank you for your son. We thank you for his examples, oh God. You thank you for uh, your Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father. God, we're asking as we leave this place for never to leave your presence that you would continue to bless, lead, and guide us in the ways that you would have us to go. These and many other blessings we ask in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Go in grace.